The Texas Rangers are one of the best teams in baseball in 2023. Sitting in first place in the AL West, the Rangers are on pace for nearly 100 wins. With the second best offense in the MLB and a starting rotation that can rival pretty much any team, it looks like the Rangers might actually have a good shot at a postseason run. But you might be wondering, what changed? Just a year ago, the Rangers had one of the worst records in the MLB, and it seemed like the team was still in the middle of a never-ending rebuild. However, over the past three years, the Rangers have committed over $800 million to free agents, the highest in the MLB in that time. So to really understand why the Rangers are performing so well right now, we have to go back to 2021. At the end of the 2021 season, the Rangers finished with one of the worst records in franchise history, with just 60 wins and 102 losses. The team was at rock bottom, and they really had no core players to build around. So if the team wanted to compete anytime soon, GM Chris Young knew he had to make some big changes in the upcoming offseason. And sure enough, on November 28th, the Rangers announced the signing of second base Marcus Simeon to a seven-year deal. In his previous season with the Blue Jays, Simeon had an all-star year, with a career-high 45 home runs and 102 RBIs. In fact, it was such a good year for Simeon that he received the Golden Glove and Silver Slugger Award, finishing at third in AL MVP votes. This signing was definitely a step in the right direction, and a sign that the Rangers might actually have a plan. And not even a day later, they continued to add on by signing star shortstop Corey Seager to a 10-year deal. And it was at this point that Rangers fans really started getting excited. Corey Seager is a generational talent. He's a former first round draft pick and a World Series MVP, and the Rangers now have him locked down until he's 37 years old. And after these two signings, the Rangers now had a $500 million middle infield going into the 2022 season. But they weren't done quite yet. They also added John Gray, a middle of the rotation starter from the Rockies. So even though they hadn't solved all their problems, fans were still hopeful about the 2022 season. However, it was worse than anyone could have imagined. They got off to a decent start, but by the end of the season, the Rangers had lost 94 games and were 38 games back of the first place Astros. But I mean, why were they so bad? Well, even with the help of Simeon and Seager, the Rangers were still below average offensively, ranking 19th in the MLB in Team OPS. But really, their offense wasn't even their biggest issue, but rather their pitching. Last year, the Rangers didn't have much of a starting rotation at all, with most of the starters struggling to maintain an ERA under 5. There were a few bright spots though like Martin Perez and John Gray. Perez finished 2022 with a career best 2.89 ERA and a 5 B war, emerging as one of the best left-handed pitchers in the MLB last year. John Gray also had a pretty decent year, ending the season with a respectable 3.96 ERA. But obviously, these two on their own weren't enough. The team desperately needed to address this lack of pitching. So in this past offseason, they did, and in a major way that nobody was really expecting. They started off by signing Jacob deGrom to a 5 year $185 million contract, which they might end up regretting, but we'll get to that later. As we all know, Jacob deGrom is one of, if not the best pitcher in the MLB. He's a two-time Cy Young winner who consistently puts up some of the lowest ERAs for starting pitchers every single season. This signing gave the Rangers an actual ace at the top of the rotation, and even though deGrom is already on the IL this season, the Rangers have won every single time he's taken the mound. But even still, the Rangers were well aware that getting deGrom on his own wasn't enough, and that they still need to fill up the rest of the rotation. So, in order to do that, they also signed Nathan Avaldi and Andrew Heaney, who are now the number two and number five starters in the rotation. So with a brand new starting rotation, the Rangers were looking much better heading into this season, but I don't think anyone expected them to be as good as they are. And surprisingly, the biggest reason for this so far has been the Rangers offense. In 2022, the Rangers offense was not great, ending up below average as a team in categories like batting average, OPS, and run differential. However, in 2023, it's a completely different story. And seemingly out of nowhere, the Rangers are now the second best offense in baseball behind the Rays, ranking top five in the MLB in all the categories I stated before. Now you're probably wondering, how did this happen considering the lineup barely changed from last year? Well, there's a lot of players contributing to this, so I'll try to get through them all quickly. First up is the Rangers leadoff hitter, Marcus Simeon. Coming off of a decent year in 2022, Simeon has really stepped it up at the plate this year, hitting almost 300 with an OPS of A64. Now, Simeon doesn't hit 
the ball super hard, but he makes up for it by constantly putting the ball in play and avoiding strikeouts. So it's no surprise that at the time of this recording, Simeon ranks top 5 amongst all second basemen in almost every offensive category. Next up, and following Simeon in the lineup, is Corey Seager. Seager had an extremely hot start to the season, with a 359 average and an OPS plus of 181. Now obviously, it was no surprise that he would make a big difference in the lineup, but he's already seeing some major improvements from last year, which is partly due from the banning of the shift. Unfortunately though, Corey has been on the IL with a hamstring strain for the past few weeks, but he should be back soon. Surprisingly though, the Rangers have been doing just fine without him, and that's mainly because their backup shortstop, Ezekiel Duran, has stepped up big time in Seager's absence. Duran has been a huge bright spot this year, hitting almost 300 with 4 home runs and 16 RBIs. He does have a few problems though, as he doesn't walk a lot and he chases a lot of pitches out of the zone. But so far, it hasn't really mattered. What does matter is that he hits the ball hard and he does it often. So even when Seager returns, Duran has definitely earned a starting spot in the lineup as a DH. Moving down the lineup, and now we're at one of the most underrated players in the MLB right now, Jonah Heim. He was acquired in 2021 as a backup catcher, but this year he's definitely proved that he's an everyday starter. Hitting 316 with 28 RBIs, 6 home runs, and an OPS of 931, Heim is not only the best bat in the Rangers lineup so far, but he's also one of the best offensive catchers in all of baseball. Overall, he just looks extremely confident at the plate so far this year, and it'll be interesting to see if he can keep it up. But regardless, Heim has certainly been a huge part of the Rangers' success. But really, almost every player on the Rangers has been incredible this year. I mean, just look at Josh Young. He's a rookie third baseman, and he already has 8 home runs. Not to mention, he was also the American League Rookie of the Month in April. Adolis Garcia, their right fielder, has 9 home runs and leads the MLB with 36 RBIs. And of course, we can't forget about Nathaniel Lowe, one of the few players in the MLB last year who hit for a 300 average the entire season. So yeah, the Rangers offense is pretty good. Nobody really knows if they're going to be able to keep this up, but for now, let's move on to the pitching. When it was first announced that Jacob deGrom was coming to Texas, there was a lot of concern about his recent history with injuries. And unfortunately, these concerns were valid, as he's already injured and is going to be out for a couple of weeks. As of right now, the first spot is being held down by Dane Dunning. Now obviously, you can't replace someone like deGrom, but Dunning has been excellent in his two starts with a sub 2 ERA. In the second spot, we have Nathan Avaldi, who got off to a rough start to the season with an ERA over 5 in his first 5 starts. However, in his past 3 starts, he's become one of the best pitchers in baseball, currently holding the longest streak of scoreless innings at 28.2. Finishing out the rotation, we have Martin Perez, John Gray, and Andrew Heaney. Now, I'm not going to go in depth on each of them individually, but they've all been pretty good with some rough starts here and there. Overall, the pitching is much improved over last year. I think they're still a couple years away from being a serious threat, but so far, the season is definitely a step in the right direction, and the Rangers are definitely a team to watch for the next few years.